So I just came across something I think you guys might find interesting. It has to do with the incredible destructive power of nitro. So this happened to a friend of mine, a guy named Nasty Dave Benjamin. Dave has been around since the beginning of time. He's like 80 years old. He's been racing fuel cars since 1969, 1970. So Dave's also like one of my all-time heroes. Dave is, Dave is like the guy. Been there, done it, got the t-shirt. And uh, he's, he's absolutely one of the smartest and one of the most industrious people I've ever met. And he makes for a fantastic argument. So, at any rate, make a long story short, Dave last week was running his car over in Boise, Idaho. They were getting ready to run. And they experienced a hydraulic event. So now, I, every internal combustion engine is subject to a potential hydraulic. That's where a cylinder will fill with liquid, whatever it happens to be, fuel, oil, water, and it can't be compressed. Generally speaking, it'll, it'll bend the connecting rod, it'll break a piston, it'll do all sorts of damage. But when it happens to a fuel motor, it's, a, it's on a, a whole different level. And the thing about it happening with a nitro motor is that it doesn't have to be running to be explosive. All you have to do is crank the engine over. I used to tell people, one of the safest places, if you're, if you're around a fuel car, if you're you know, involved and you're around a fuel car, one of the safest places to be is in the driver's seat because the driver is suited up, the driver is surrounded by roll cage and all kinds of safety equipment, and the driver is expecting certain situations to happen. The crew members, the people around the car, they're not expecting anything. They're not prepared for anything, they're not dressed for anything, and when something happens, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, it can be a mess. So, anyway, what happened was they were getting ready to run the car. So, the first procedure is to spin the motor over and the fuel is off, right? So, so the pump is turned off, right? There's no fuel able to get into the, into, the, into the engine. And the ignition is grounded. The magneto is grounded, so there's no spark. And everybody has a slightly different procedure for this for the starting routine and theirs is to spin it to get oil pressure then once they see oil pressure they turn on the fuel and pull the mag when they unground the mag the engine starts so everybody's poised around the engine they go to spin it to get the oil pressure up the guy who's going to pull the mag wire is actually it's dave's cousin steve and he's He's poised over the engine, getting ready for the signal to pull the, the, the mag wire to start the engine. They spin the motor at one, one or two revolutions, and it exploded. It hydraulic. And the, the, the carnage is just amazing. This is something that could only happen to a fuel motor. So, you see here, the whole front corner of the engine is missing. So... It took this section of the block and tore the head in half and just threw this whole thing right off the motor. Tore the mags out. You can see there's no mags in this picture. Total devastation. And Dave's cousin Steve caught the brunt of it because of his position. So the mag is right here and he's going to unground the mag. So when this thing exploded, he was like right there. Evidently, lots of people are hit by shrapnel, but he got dinged up pretty good. Um, I'm not sure exactly. He's, he's, he's on the mend, but it was a, they had to put pins and rods and amputate a couple of toes and whatnot. And listen, uh, Dave, if you're watching this, okay, I got a, this, these are our new shirts. These are in the store right now, but I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you and your crew member, Steve, a couple of these shirts. So get a hold of me, Uncle Tony's Garage at gmail.com, or just send me a message on Facebook and uh, get me some sizes and I'll get you guys some shirts out. So, that's the thing about nitro. Nitro is a relatively benign fuel. Like, for instance, it has the same basic characteristics as water, has almost the same specific gravity as water. It acts like water. It's not, it's not like gasoline or alcohol. It's really light. Nitro is just very heavy and dense. And it's not easily flammable. I mean, like, I used to, I used to light my barbecue with this stuff. And, and it has about the same potency as lighter fluid. Honestly, that's that's how it burns. It doesn't go, it's just, it's just like this light yellow flame. It, you know. But when you compress it, when you squeeze it, it becomes, it becomes a true explosive. As you can imagine the force that it takes to just literally 
clear the front corner of the engine, not just the block, not just, but the cylinder head too. So they're not sure exactly what caused it. This happens, it happens occasionally. It happens every several years. I know back in the early 70s, Gene Snow actually had a, had a hydraulic vent in the pits and it, it sent a piston through his ankle. So it shattered his ankle. Um, I know Jim Head had a bad one. There were, there were so I actually saw a really bad one once at an IHRA race. It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, it's spectacular. So that's it. The, the, the awesome, brutal power of nitro. It's just, it, it's, it's one of the things that makes this stuff as addictive as it is. It sounds crazy, right? But it's like, you almost don't mind blowing this stuff up. <laughs> because it's like the, the creative carnage, the extreme destruction is its own form of entertainment. I know it sounds sick, but it is. I don't remember who said it. I don't remember who said it. But uh, the quote was, you're not ready to run nitro until you can take $100 bills, light them on fire, and not flinch. <laughs> and that's, that's like the truth. And when you're in the sickness, no, yeah, just, just torch that stuff. I hope you feel better, guy. And uh, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. It occurred to me right after we shot that that the last body that I had on my fuel altered was actually Dave Benjamin's. He had built it in the middle 1980s. It's a 1927 Model T. Most altereds are done off of the earlier style body. The 27 is, is bigger. It's got the full fenders and all that. And um, here's, here's pictures of it. So. He built this originally, ran it on his car, then he sold it to Brent Fanning. Other nonsense, Brent Fanning. And uh, he ran it as, as uh, it's called the Ice Scream Machine, right? So then I was with Bobby Lagana at the time, we had a fire, decided no more funny cars, we were going to go fuel altered racing. So he bought the body off of Fanning. And then I ended up buying the body off of Bobby, and that's how it ended up on my car. So these pictures were taken, these were taken at my house, probably right around 1993, 1994 or thereabouts. So there's the car. We, we, we used to light it up in the driveway every once in a while. My neighbors loved that, right? Um, so, let's see. There's, a, there's, there's Uncle Kathy cleaning valve covers, <laughs> polishing valve covers. This was, this was an English town. Um, look, this, there's a story behind this picture. This, that's me, right? That's, that's uh, Storm and Norman Blake in the, in the driver's seat for the warm-up. That's me. I'm starting the motor. And uh, you notice I, I have a bald spot. <laughs> that, was the first time, that was the first time I realized I was bald. <laughs> How many times do you see a picture of your own head, right? So that was in English Town, and then let's see. There's a. I'm just screwing around with the car there. Here, this is. This is. I think this is one of my license passes with the car. So it was a. It was a pretty. It was a pretty car. It, it looked really nice. And uh, there's, there's Uncle Kathy backing me up. She, had, she used to make this puke face. Remember the puke face she used to make? <laughs> she was going to throw up. So, yeah, lots and lots of fun. But that originally, that car was originally uh, Dave Benjamin's. Well, the body was originally Dave Benjamin's. Remember what saying? There's uh, lots of dead people. You know, that's, that's the thing, man. You look back, and you got lots of dead people in your pictures. There's Bobby Lagani. He's gone. There's Stormy Norman Hechtdorf. He's gone. Um, but I'm, I'm still kicking. I'm still kicking. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>